Hi everybody, thanks for watching. This is the past physiology review of topic three material. This is the second video. The first one was over morphology and classification. Uh, now we're gonna be talking about uh, the bone tissue, including cells, uh, how it grows, and some clinical stuff um, about pathologies and hormone processes, vitamin D, PTH, etc. Okay, so uh, on the left side of the screen, you see a PDF version of the Junkiera text. Uh, it's chapter eight over bone, and I'm looking at figure 8-1. This is a 13th edition, so you might have a newer one. Uh, but find this components of bone diagram. Uh, it is wonderful. We're gonna be working our way through that to clarify some of the terminology, where things are at, uh, and how uh, bone is arranged, uh, compact bone and woven bone both, but kind of focusing on compact bone. On the upper right corner, you see the uh, past study guide that I created. This study guide is called Bone Tissue, Topic 3, Bone Tissue Growth and Clinical. Uh, and it is a one pager with a lot of stuff on there. In the lower right corner, uh, we've got your class notes. Um, just for reference, just so you can kind of see what, you know, what's going on. Ideally, you guys are studying with all of this stuff in front of you, whether it's paper or digital. Uh, it's good to go back and forth and use these resources to clarify the other uh, or just to review with pictures, tables, and straight up uh, words, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, let's just look at her notes here, okay? Bone cells is the second thing. So, well, I should say, I should start with matrix, okay? Because there's nothing about bone matrix in my study guide. It's pretty straightforward, so I'll touch upon that and then we'll get into bone cells. So we know that connective tissue has an extracellular matrix involved. And so specifically the, the matrix of bone tissue is going to be high in type 1 collagen. Uh, we talked about this in past sessions, but if I think of a bone, I think of a typical like cartoon, long bone, dog bone, kind of, you know, it's long, shaped like an eye, which looks like a 1, okay, or shaped like a 1. Type 1 looks like a long bone. Stereotypical image of a bone is a long bone, at least for me. So if that helps you remember, uh, then then that's great. Otherwise, you know, also remember that type one collagen is the most common uh, collagen in the body. Uh, it's everywhere, including bone. There's lots of bones, and may maybe that helps you. But anyway, type one collagen uh, will be dominating uh, as far as fiber goes, and and that stuff's strong. It's fibrillar collagen. It's strong, so it's going to resist forces, specifically tensile forces. Now the ground substance, okay, is gonna have, you know, all your standard stuff, but it's gonna be richer in certain things than others. Uh, proteoglycans, okay, are protein core with a bunch with sulfated gags, right, attached to the protein core, uh, and that creates proteoglycan, and they bind up lots of uh, sodium, potassium, and water. And you also have this going on in hard connective tissue as well as soft connective tissue. So you've got proteoglycans. And you need to know that it's chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate that are dominating bone, okay, as opposed to the other uh, sulfated gags. And then also, you've got hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is the most common gag in the body. It's all over the place. It's also in bone, okay? So just throw it in there. Hyaluronic acid is there. The specific glycoproteins, gly glycoprotein, glucoprotein, sticky protein, globular protein balls that stick stuff together, Okay, your glycoproteins in bone, pretty easy to remember because they have the word, they have the, you know, phrase osteo in them, osteonectin and osteocalcin. Okay, be able to identify those as glycoproteins specific to bone. Now, you can see that I made, I wrote this little thing here, kacha, okay? So, this is just a way to maybe help you remember the proteoglycan, well, I should say the, the gags, okay? And uh, yeah, the gags in bone. So K is for keratin sulfate. CH is for chondroitin, okay? Chondroitin, chondroitin sulfate. And then HA, uh, this is how you abbreviate hyaluronic acid, right? HA. So ka -cha! And maybe you want to karate chop your arm bone, okay? ka -cha! Okay, maybe that helps you remember the three common gags in bone, ka -cha! Let that sink in, maybe it'll help come test time. All right, and then the other thing is that um, those are the organic components of bone. Those, those, are, those things are alive and being produced by cells. Technically not alive, but they're produced by living cells. 
then you've got just like minerals in your bone, okay? And so the composite of all these minerals, which is mostly calcium, but there's all kinds of other minerals and it can vary depending on people's, you know, what they've been putting into their bodies and where they live and what they're exposed to. Principally, it's calcium, but this complex that makes a bone together is called, excuse me, is called hydroxyapatite, okay? You need to know that. So hydroxyapatite is calcium and a bunch of other stuff Okay, phosphorus and even magnesium and all these other minerals. Hydroxyapatite is a whole bunch of different minerals, mostly calcium, which you know is deposited in your bone to make it hard and strong. Okay, now we can go on to cells. All right, and I'm going to use my study guide principally, okay, to look at cells. This is my study guide. I, don't, I guess I can just bring this back up, and you've got four types of cells. If you want to rewrite them out, I, I like them in this order because this is kind of, it kind of makes sense chronologically, okay, as far as their lifespan goes. Osteoprogenitor cells give rise to osteoblasts, okay? Osteoprogenitor cells are like stem cells. They come from stem cells. They're like a bone stem cell. They give rise to osteoblasts by differentiating into an osteoblast. The osteoblasts create bone, new bone tissue. Okay? Anytime you see the word blast as far attached to the name of a cell, it means it's making something. So don't get blast confused with clast either. Okay? Clast will be destroyers, blasts are going to be creative cells. These osteoblasts will lay down new bone tissue okay, around the outside here because they're located along with the things that give rise to them, the osteoprogenitors. They're located in the central and perforating canals of the periosteum. Okay? Now, osteoblasts will be laying down bone tissue and kind of build themselves a little wall. Okay, I think of like laying down bricks all around themselves while they build up bone tissue and they keep going around and around and around laying down like a circular brick wall around themselves and they essentially entrap themselves. When they build up all this bone tissue around themselves, they're stuck. That little pocket that they become stuck in will be called a lacunae. Lacunae kind of sounds like lagoon. A lagoon is technically like, you know, a little, almost like a bay or something that's attached to, to water, you know, at the ocean. But it's kind of its own little body of water. And maybe you just think of like, you associate lagoon with tropical, you associate tropical with islands. A lacuna is kind of like a little island in bone. The osteoblast will make the lacuna. When they're stuck inside the lacuna, when they're stuck inside their bone tissue that they created, they will change and become an osteocyte. Okay, so osteoprogenitors come from stem cells. They will turn into an osteoblast. The osteoblast will lay down new bone tissue. They'll lay down bone tissue all around themselves and trap themselves into something that will be called a lacuna. When they're stuck in that lacuna, they change, they turn into an osteocyte. An osteocyte is a mature bone cell, okay? And this osteocyte is not gonna be laying down new bone tissue where it wasn't before, but it will, through whatever various chemical processes in response to the environment, and it's in response to stress, which keeps them alive, physical stress keeps them alive, these osteocytes will maintain the bone tissue, okay? So you need to know that blasts, osteoblasts lay down new bone tissue, osteocytes maintain existing bone tissue. Okay, osteocytes are found in lacunae. Okay, osteocytes, lacunae. Okay, this is also going to be related to interstitial growth, which starts, which starts with an eye down here. Okay, um, osteocytes live in lacunae. Okay, lacunae of what? Well, in the lacunae of the osteons that create compact bone, or in the lacunae of the bony struts that make up spongy bone. Okay, but you need to know that lacunae are these little islands. If we come over here to this picture from your book, this label, right, says lacunae, and this is kind of referring to this little hole in the bone, and this is talking, this osteocyte, right, is this red thing with these prongs or whatever, so the red thing is the cell, the osteocyte, stuck inside of the lacunae, or the hole in the bone, and these little tubes connecting it are called can canaliculi, canaliculi, okay, they're like little tiny tubes connecting all these lacunae. 
So you can also find these things on this larger diagram. So you've got, this is like a cutout of a long bone. Inside you've got spongy bone, okay, or tra trabecular bone. Um, and then around the outside you've got all this uh, compact bone. Compact bone is gonna be made up of all these different units which are called osteons, okay? They're like a tube. They're a bunch of tubes connected together that will make up the cortex. And uh, cortical bone, com you know, compact bone. So these are each separate osteons. An osteon will have a central canal through which you know vessels uh, and a nerve can run through. And then this diagram also shows them cut out here. This is a central canal containing the vessels and the nerve. That's a great question uh, that could you know that you need to know. What's going to be carrying the vessels and the nerves? Well, it's going to be the both the perforating canals and central canals of uh, compact bone and a perforating canal basically connects the central canals, okay? It perforates the osteons to connect the central canal, which, you know, is running right up longitudinally through each osteon. Then you've got all these lamellae. We'll be coming back to the cells, okay? But as long as I'm over here, I just want to clarify this diagram. You've got all these different types of lamellae, okay? Um, lamellae, you know, you got concentric lamellae around each osteon, okay? You've got uh, notice that you've got uh, an alternating collagen fiber arrangement to provide strength. If they were all going the same way, then one type of force could potentially break that. But when they're opposing, you know, oblique angles, then that creates some strength uh, with this varied arrangement. But anyway, you've got concentric, okay, circle, concentric lamella around uh, the, you know, each osteon. And then between all the osteons, on the inside, you have internal circumferential lamellae and then around the outside uh, you know near the periosteum you have the external circumferential lamella okay lamellae so be able to distinguish those different lamellae uh, and you know be able to point to them on a diagram and you should understand you know if you see them in a written question and then for sure we've got the periosteum you know the, the uh, covering of the bone with its cellular inner layer and the fibrous outer layer We've, you know, we'll, we've talked about that a little bit in the past and we'll come back to it soon. So, you know, other than that, this diagram, you just can see the, uh, the spongy bone, right? And the trabecula kind of had the same thing going on on a smaller scale. Um, this is a spongy bone, you know, picture of what's, uh, of all these cells and everything. You have this endosteum around the outside uh, here, and then you've got a little lamella, right, making its little... Uh, kind of like the osteon, right, but going around in circles. This is showing you an osteoclast, which we'll come to. It's around the outside. They can be anywhere, okay, and they're just going to be destroying bone. Um, and then there are lacuna, right, and spongy bone, and the lacuna is where the osteocyte live. Osteocyte lacunae. Okay, that just helps me associate the two, and maybe it will help you associate osteocytes live in lacunae. Osteoblasts. Uh, this says the osteoblasts are along the trabecula of new bone, and they're around the outside here. If you go back here, you see osteoblasts are in the canals of the periosteum. Okay, so that would, periosteum would put them around the outside and also in the endosteum, uh, you know, in the internal aspect of bones. So let's come back over here to the cells. Osteoprogenitors give rise to osteoblasts. Osteoblasts build new bone tissue. They wall themselves in, and then they turn into osteocytes. These osteocytes live in these little walled-in areas called lacunae, like islands, okay? And osteoclasts are the weird thing, okay? So, so far everything, you know, was just sort of like grandpa, dad, you know, and then you, or whatever, right? So it's giving birth to new things. Osteoclasts are completely different, and you need to know this. First off, osteoclasts do the opposite of the other cells, right? They destroy bone, not always pathologically. They, they're always remodeling your bone um, in a normal process as well, but they get rid of bone as opposed to building or maintaining new bone. This depends on blood plasma, concent or, sorry, blood plasma calcium concentrations, which is controlled by parathyroid hormone. We'll get back to that later. So, so it's a normal thing that they're remodeling your bone, but they can also destroy it pathologically. But regardless, osteoclasts, okay, 
clasped, clash, clashing breaks things. Maybe that helps you remember. Osteoclasts break down bone. They, they lyse it okay, with, a, with a chemical that they secrete, basically. Um, they can be found anywhere. They don't have specific locations. They're just anywhere. And skip this little thing right here and look at their origin. They come from monocytes, okay, which are a, a blood cell. Um, they, they would be related to like macrophages, which are immune cells that come from monocytes. Macrophages live in your tissue and they cruise around and lice, okay, and gobble up uh, pathogens and, you know, neutroph... Well, we'll just keep it at macrophages you might be familiar with. But if you're not, you, you'll learn about them. But anyway, there's your, these are blood cells. They're monocytes. And they're not just one cell. They're a fusion of a bunch of cells. They're a fusion of a bunch of monocytes. And they cruise around anywhere in bone, destroying lysing, okay, L-Y-S-I-N-G, lysing bone to remodel it or to just increase the uh, blood plasma calcium concentration in your blood. So we'll come back to this pathway, but just so you kind of know what's going on, this little plus sign with a circle around it, that just kind of indicates that this is a clinical note. And this arrow down means less, obviously. So less calcium leads to parathyroid hormone increase, which leads to osteoclasts increase their activity, okay? That pathway is a little more complicated, noted over here. Parathyroid hormone will technically bind onto osteoblasts, which will activate this OPGL thing, okay, which you don't need to know the, you know, you don't need to decipher the acronym, but there is an intermediate intermediary in this process. So PTH acts on osteoblasts, which triggers OPGL, okay, to stimulate pre-osteoclasts to turn into mature osteoclasts, which will then become more prevalent and therefore more active, which will lice more bone, okay? This is the simple pathway that might be sufficient. This is the more detailed pathway that might be necessary. So it's up to you how detailed you wanna get with this process, but you gotta know that less, less plasma calcium leads to an increase in parathyroid hormone, which will essentially increase the activity of osteoclasts. And what do osteoclasts do? do? They destroy bone by lysing it, okay, chemically, and they remodel it or just straight up destroy it pathologically, uh, depending on you know, the situation.